What is going on everybody? My name is Jesse Morrison with Not at Hooks and today we're going to cover running the plug on the river. There are so many different aspects to this so I wanted to have someone with me to kind of give you the overview of everything. Today I got Clint Fretz with me. He is the master for running plugs on the river and he's going to kind of break down everything for you guys so that you know how to be successful and land all those salmon. Okay, today I wanted to start off with the rod and reel. The rods, I like to use a fiberglass rod with a line counter reel. You don't have to get real crazy about it. Um, I like the lamb glass, uh, the battle glass rods, classic glass. Uh, any of the glass blank rods are, to me, a superior plug rod. It gives a lot more action. It's a slower action uh, and gives the plugs themselves more action in the water. Uh, the reels, if you can keep it as a line counter, I think you're going to be better off overall. Uh, personally, I like the Convectors by Akuma. They've been treating me pretty well, uh, even on the Big Kings and the Chum. Uh, line, 65 pound is what I usually use for salmon. When, I, when I'm fishing steelhead or anything else, I'll drop it down to 50, sometimes 30 in the summer, maybe 30, but usually nothing less than 50. So is there like a, a, a length of rod that you want to stay between a certain size on these? Or is it just you can get out there and just run any rod? It depends on uh, your boat setup. So okay. when I go to Idaho and I'm fishing plugs in Idaho, you can run two rods a person. So I'm plugging five rods out of the drift boat. Now, depending on what position the rod is in is going to depend on what length rod I want. The center rod out the front center, I want to be a shorter rod overall. So your eight foot, eight twos are gonna be front center. If you're pulling them out the sides as number four and five right in front of the rower, you're gonna want a longer rod. I'll run an eight six to 10 foot rod and in those positions. And that just gets it away just from to spread the rest them of the stuff. Out. Okay. Yep. And then my two and three rods in the front are gonna be in the eight and a half to nine foot lengths, just so that everything gets more spread uh, and less likely to tangle. All right, we got the rod and reel and line covered, so uh, why don't you take us in with what the plugs are. Okay, uh, I like to categorize them three ways. Steelhead plugs, low water salmon plugs, and then your standard colored water salmon plugs. There's not a lot of difference between the low water salmon plugs and the standard sand salmon plugs, but uh, size difference and sometimes pattern makes a big difference. Okay, let's start with the steelhead plugs. Uh, there's a lot of different scenarios and everything else for them, but generally speaking, we'll start with the bigger water uh, and bigger flows plugs. So I like to run the hot shots in size 25 and 30s. Uh, bigger clear water, don't be afraid to run the old school prism plugs. A lot of guys like the blues, the golds, uh, the greenback prisms and silver, uh, black and gold is also a good color. Uh, that's for clear water, bigger flows, and the bigger size. Now you can also downsize that and fish the same prisms, but different, different flows and clarity. But generally speaking, you want the prisms on sunny days in the clear water. Then you can go to the, your green pirates and your metallic blues and greens uh, generally speaking uh, in any size for sunny days work great the old blue back and chrome belly is a buzz ramsey favorite he caught his uh, biggest fish on that didn't he yeah he caught he got one of his one of the world records on that plug not plug specific but that pattern uh then when you drop into the smaller sizes, I like to fish the smaller rivers for steelhead. Uh, on cloudy days, uh, it's hard to beat a white-based plug, uh, whether it's mostly white, pearl white, uh, but on a cloudy day, on your standard visibility, even clear water, uh, the white bases seem to outfish a lot of times your metallic plugs. And then, same thing, your metallic plugs on the sunny days. Uh, it's tough to beat 
a size 30 hot shot, especially if you have any That's sort of clarity. Yeah. Uh, anywhere from four to six feet or clear, it's tough to beat. All right, so let's dive into these uh, low water salmon plugs you got here. What size and, and, and how do you do these guys? In the low clear water, I like to run uh, K13X. Uh, K13s fish great also, uh, but I like the fact that the K13X, I can pick whether I want a silent or a rattle. It's uh, pretty difficult these days to find a silent K13X, but they are out there. What does the X stand for? So the X is the Extreme Series. Uh, they've been tested in the factory before they've been packaged. Uh, so every one I've taken out of the box has always swam true. Nice. Uh, there's always that anomaly where, you know, you catch a fish on it and it'll bend the eye and you got to retune it. But that, for generally speaking, a new plug is going to run true out of the box. And that is going to increase your catch rate as well as your bait in the water time when you're not messing with it. Awesome. Uh, as far as colors go, I like to stick to the darker colors, the darker purples and pinks uh, with cloud cover and cloudy situations, but still in that, you know, September, October, when you get that low clear water situations, plugs are very effective. But I like to stick to the darker, the darker bodies with some, some color on the bills and tails. When the sun is out on those cleared, clear water days, I like to go with a chrome base plug. The Fruit Loop yep. has been absolutely a fish slayer this year. This Fruit plug Loop. itself has caught over over 100 fish easy this season. They look pretty worn. They, <laughs> I see a lot of bite they, marks on them too. There's a lot of worn, there's a lot of bill wear. Uh, when low water, you're dealing with, you know, low flows and, and low water yep. so don't be afraid to pull those plugs in two feet of water now awesome. at that same time it will you know it'll shrink the bill a little bit and wear it down but generally speaking you know with a decent paint you won't have to worry about anything except for the edge all right i'm gonna have him talk about the k14s and 15s for kind of a, a more dirty water and uh deeper pockets and stuff here so you want to go over kind of what you have here in front of us so K14s and K15s, a uh, lot of guys like their K15s for all conditions. They're a little bit big to me when you get into the low water. That's why I like the 13s. But generally speaking, your general flows with, you know, anywhere from a foot and a half to five feet of visibility, 90% of the time in those flows, you're going to run a, either a 14 or a 15. Uh, same thing, depending on light conditions are going to depend on what colors I like to run. The darker colors and the lower lights and on those sunny days, the chrome bases really reflect pretty good. Um, as far as that goes, uh, there's, there's some simple patterns to stick by. The old traffic signal and wild bands are hard to beat to me. Right. Uh, same thing, you can get the Fruit Loops, uh, Downtown Gals, all of those are great fishers. So the K-15s and the 14s, we went out and we went chum fishing. We just, we crushed it out there. So, I mean, certain salmon are more attracted to certain stuff. And like I said, you, you do your own stuff too. So. You can, uh, what's what's the place that people can buy plugs from you or custom paint? So they can get a hold of me on Facebook at just Clint Fretz on Facebook, or you can get a hold of my wife's page, Cowboy Cross Customs. Uh, we offer them through myself and through her. Uh, big thing with the custom painted plugs is you can have a plug that's caught over a hundred fish and just have a little bit of bill wear and I get complacent when I'm taking my wraps off and I'll slice them. Look at those teeth marks too. Well, that's from my knife. Oh, but, <laughs> look at those knife but marks. This still has, you know, right about 100 chum on it and probably an extra 20 good. coho yeah. on it as well. And you've got bite marks and everything else, but when you use the right clear coats, uh, they, they stand up. Yeah. Pretty dang good. It makes a big difference. All on... right, so let's get into the last section of this. Uh, how do you tune this guy, and why would you tune it? Okay, well, there's there's a couple different reasons you'd tune it. My personal favorite reason is I wrap the plug with too much. <laughs> if, if my wrap's too big, I will tune the plug so that it'll carry the wrap. That's Plain crazy. and simple. Uh, 
a lot of guys might laugh at me for it, but it seems to work. So it's like I'll a fat stick to Albert it. out there. You're like, no yep. way is that going to run. Some are a little big. I've had people tell me it'll never work. And we catch a fish, you know, three minutes later on that same plug. That would never work. So, well. uh, but it's pretty simple. You're just, the target with an unwrap plug is to start with the eye straight. Straight as you can get it. Now, depending on the situation, a standard wrap on a plug is going to run with a straight eye. Right. If if I got ahead of myself and I wrapped it, you know, a little lopsided with a little bit too much bait on one side or the other, or I just flat packed too much bait on the belly of that plug, you might have to run it a little bit sideways, you know, left or right, depending on what, what way you, you know, you wrapped it too much. Now, if you really get started going technical, you can tune a plug to favor a side, depending on the situation. Uh, a lot of times, generally speaking, it's gonna be when you're running a lot of rods in the boat, you're gonna want those outer rods to work to either side. They're gonna favor yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, it's kind of a planer board almost, yep, right? Yep, it's gonna, want, it's gonna pull that way, you know? So traditionally, that's not the way you want the plug to run, but there are scenarios where I will run a plug that's not running true. Gotcha. Uh, now, it it's a lot finer adjustment because you can easily, at that point, easily tune it so that it's not going to fish, period. It'll just come to the surface and roll. Which so, is bad. Which is, yeah, you don't want at that. that point. But we're talking microscopic amounts of angle on the eye just so that that plug will favor the left or right oh. side of the boat. All right. Gotcha. He's going to uh, wrap... Uh, this ginormous wad of tuna on there. And this is actually the size that you would actually use. So at the end of the deal, not all that tuna is going to be on there. But I want to start crazy, with enough dude. that while I wrap it, it's going it, to, it'll be on there. Okay. It'll all right. I'm going to let you do your thing. Okay. Um, it's We're just going against start... everything that I've ever done. So when I wrap a plug, I'll grab about this much, right? And I'll, so I'll just place it on there, right? <laughs> that's, that's how I'm going to start the plug. Okay. That's okay? crazy to me. Just like that. Okay. Now, I'm tracking. take my line. Okay. I'll start at the back. So, right about that green mark, I, about an inch forward of the tail, right? I can't even tell where anything is right now. Okay, so, but when you wrap it, it's going to shrink down as you put pressure on it. Okay. Right? Okay, so, I know where the eyes are, so I'm going to stop right behind the eye. Okay. Then I'm going to go back, one more wrap on itself. Okay. That is crazy. Now we're using, generally I wouldn't use red thread. I would just use the, uh, the clear, the clear or semi-clear. Okay. Okay. Now why is that? Uh, just because I, I don't want the colors of the plug being UV or glow or whatever the, you know, the color of choice is for the day to be interrupted with the wrap thread. Gotcha. So now you're just doing a Now I'm just uh, half, half hitch. hitching. Got it. Usually two. Okay. Two is usually pretty good. Okay. And then I you usually just break, just break it off. Oop. Okay. So when we're all said and done, that's what our bait looks like. Holy cow. That's crazy. And that's what I'm wrapping and putting out on every pot. I'm always worried if it's too much on there. Well, it depends. If, if you're using a sensitive smaller plug, it well, right. It's going to make a difference. You match in the size plug. The K13X carries a very large wrap very well. Personally, it's it, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to confidence and what you're fishing with. Yeah. If you aren't fishing with confidence, you're not going to be running at everything where you would normally want to. Right. You're going to have less care. I agree. So my biggest thing is every time I make a pass plugging or, you know, wrap a bait, I'm doing it with all the confidence I have. For the best results I know I can get. That's all you can really ask for. Jeez. All right. Well, we went through the plugs. We showed you the different styles: steelhead, the low water conditions, uh, what to use if it's if it's you know you have overcast, rain, or sun out there. Size hooks, uh, what kind of gear you're using, the pole, the whole setup. I hope that you guys go out there and just crush the salmon with this. And I want to stress to you guys that we are just dropping some gold on you guys. This is like, 
I have not seen a video actually going into the detail showing you what and how to run these plugs. Uh, take this and run with it, you guys. Do whatever you want, but I'm telling you, you wanna go out there and, and like he said, fish more confident, this is the way to do it. Thank you so much for, for joining me on this, on this episode. And is there anyone you wanna give a shout out to right now? My wife's page, uh, Cowboy Cross Customs. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, just Clint Fretz. And then uh, my father-in-law's got a, a YouTube channel, uh, The Woods and the Water Call to Me. It's uh, pretty good. I've done a couple of uh, films with him, Walleye Fishing on the Columbia. He does a lot of big game and processing awesome. of big game. So Maybe, maybe we'll have to get together options. and we'll go out there together. and play this summer or something. That'd be For awesome. Sure. Well, uh, I know that... Uh, we're probably gonna be putting out another video here pretty soon. I think that we're gonna try and hook up and go fishing. Hopefully here, maybe it's, it's getting close to steelhead season, so I'm getting excited. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked everything you saw, please like and subscribe to the channel. Other than that, I'll see you guys on the water. Fishing with the plugs. <laughs> Tuning it, running it, the gear you're gonna run, the, how much, you know, uh, tests you're gonna be running for your, 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 <laughs> Hey, we're gonna be covered. The it was way more than I do, so I wanted to make sure that you guys got the information so that you're successful. Uh, join us. <laughs> <laughs>